trust issues in relationships. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simp, Five Myers, author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook, Get Rid of Your Problems, Not Your Partner. Now, last week, we actually went into broken, you know, people being broken inside of a relationship. And I talked uh, about a couple of topics in terms of how you can identify if a person is actually broken. And one of the things I brought up was trust issues, which I've had people that wanted me to go into a little bit more detail on where does it come from and then how we could actually address the trust issues. So that's why today we're going to talk specifically on that topic of trust issues, which leads to a person being broken and bringing that into a relationship. Okay, so what we want to talk about is, um, I hear all the time, people will tell me that trust is earned. Well, to me personally, that's the same as when people say respect is earned. Whenever I hear that, I ask people, I say, so what you're telling me is what you do is you disrespect people until they reach whatever... Um, standards that you've create that you've created and then they get respect and they go no I don't disrespect anybody I said wait, wait wait you said it's earned therefore there's you guys have heard me say there's two sides to every coin either you respect people or you don't if you don't respect them and some people are like that um, I've heard even certain athletes that that's the way they treat their teammates, especially rookies. They dishonor them. They disrespect them. They don't speak to them. And they think that's cool. Personally, I think it's very arrogant. And I think it's, it's, it's uh, definitely not a way to treat someone, especially that's on your team, someone that pretty much is getting ready to go to battle with you. Those are people that you want to encourage, inspire, and uh because they're the ones that need to contribute to where you're headed. So why would you feel you would want to demean someone who's on the same team with you? And to me, why would you demean anyone to begin with? So it speaks uh, pretty much to um, some arrogance, and at least my belief. And so, and I put the trust in the same category. Either you trust or you don't. And see, there's a difference between being skeptical, cynical, pessimistic. I'm not telling you not to be skeptical because being skeptical, well, that just means a little bit of doubt. And that's why I said a little bit of skepticism because that's not good to walk into relationships where you automatically skeptical. Well, I doubt in everything that you say. But depending on the situation, you got to have a little skepticism because if not, that's how people get taken. So I know that's where people are coming from when they're talking about trust is earned or respect is earned. They're basically saying, well, I got to come towards you. I got to step in, put my toe in the water a little bit and see about, fill you out before I give all of that. And my thing is, give all of that. But at the same time, keep your eyes open to, to recognize it's not that I'm expecting you to do wrong, but I'm very alert to what you do. And then that gets me, you get to define for me how I will see you based on your actions, based on your character, your integrity. And again, we know that's going to be my perspective, but does it line up with the things that I believe in? See, I can watch you and figure that out. So what I'm getting to on, on, this, on the same thing when I'm talking about the trust, as I said, you give people trust with a little skepticism, nothing wrong with that. But don't be a pessimist. Don't be cynical. See, to me, that's what I hear whenever I hear people saying I, I can't trust is or I don't trust people. Those are cynical people. It's like, how can you meet me and not trust me? That's where the racism comes in. That's where all the discrimination, the stuff that we got going on. People that are dishonoring, disrespecting, not trusting all this stuff on people they don't even know. And they're not going to give them the opportunity in most cases to figure them out. Do they have character and integrity? Don't be that person. Give everyone a fair shake and let them determine based on their actions, their character and their integrity, 
how intimate this relationship between you and I will become if it ever will become intimate. And when we talk about the intimacy, um, that comes down to um, one of the things I share about the iceberg. The iceberg serves about 10% of who it is and the other 90% is underwater. And it's the same thing in relationships. In relationships, you're only going to show 10%. That's kind of that when, what I'm talking about here. You're giving a little bit of that skepticism. You're giving a little bit. You're giving the trust. You're giving all that kind of stuff. You're giving that. You're not giving it all because the fact is a lot of the information, the 90% that's underwater, that's deep stuff. That stuff that's close to the heart. That's stuff that people can use to hurt you, to destroy you. And those things, we're going to be very careful who we share that with. And the reason you're that way is because some people will use that information specifically to destroy you. So you have to make sure, and that is kind of where some of this betrayal and this trust comes from, is because someone that you share this intimate information with turned around and used it against you or shared it with others that it shouldn't have been shared with and that becomes a betrayal, or at least you feel that you've been betrayed. So, but what I wanted to talk about, you know, as far as, and again, what I'm saying, when people say I can't trust, I should have covered that real quick. But when people say I can't trust, well, I tell people that's a myth. We all do trust. When you open your mouth, don't you expect words to come out? Mm -hmm. You trust that it's going to happen. When you walk into a, a business and you see a chair, that chair has, you have no proof that that chair works. None. You've never seen that chair before. But when you go to sit down, you trust that it's going to hold you. Because you would assume the people in here, in the place establishment, wouldn't have a broken chair sitting there. Obviously, you trust them enough. You said, so we could go on and I can give examples all day. You get in your car, you're trusting that everyone else is going to stay in their lane. Why? Because you don't have a choice because you can't get where you want to go if you don't trust. So we all do trust. It's what do we trust in? So a lot of times when I hear people talking about they can't trust, they're actually specifically saying relationships. And that's why we want to talk about that a little bit today. So now, where did that lack, or we should say that, that, that loss of trust, where does it come from? Now, for most people, it starts in childhood. I know, we've heard this before. Don't blame the parents. It ain't the parents. They play a major role. And it's not necessarily parents. It could be whoever your guardians were, because maybe you're unfortunately one of those people that your parents weren't there, but the guardians. And the question would be, why aren't your parents there? Now, if, it was, if they're not there because they passed away, that's one thing. But if they're, they're alive, because I've known people whose parents are local, close around them, and they have no relationship with them whatsoever. That's why parents, a lot of parents don't really get it. You are the first man, woman, that your children will ever see. You are that example of them of character, integrity, and they watch the way you guys treat each other. That's why I tell people, if you treat your wife, and I always say, if you treat, that's why I tell people, don't get mad at me because I know some, especially ladies get mad when I say this, but your kids are not your priority. I know, I know, I know. They're not. Your partner is your priority. The reason I say that before you want to strangle me is because if you take care of your partner and your partner takes care of you, your kids are automatically taken care of. You're never going to see a relationship where a husband and wife are like this and the kids are not automatically taken care of. Why? Because if the spouse is the one that really looks after her kids, the, you know, the wife, and the husband doesn't, she's going to have a problem with him and vice versa. You see what I'm saying? You would have friction in your relationship because of that. So the kids are going to automatically by default be taken care of. Make sure your partner is taken care of. Too many people find out after their kids leave what I'm talking about. 
and they're people that's been together 20, 30 years and then they get divorced because the kids are no longer in the house. So the glue that was actually keeping them together is gone because they didn't keep each other as a priority. That's why you hear successful relationships where people talk about they date. Yeah, you have to. You have to make sure you find that time for your partner and keep them. Priority of time does not mean priority. You guys get me? See, some people think when you say, well, my kids need me to feed them. Nobody's telling you not to feed your kids. Your partner is your priority. I remember a comedian said a long time ago, he said him and his wife figured it out as they got older, became them versus the kids. <laughs> he said, what I realized is the kids are temporary non-paying uh, residents. And folks, that's real. If you're, if you're doing right, if you and your partner take care of business, you gonna, those kids are going to be in your house for 18 to 20, 22 years, and they're gone. Your partner, if you do it right, will be with you 50, 60, 70 years. Boy, think about that. 20 years, 70 years. Who you better be taking care of the 70 year. Understand that relationship will automatically take care of the kids. But anyway, that's a whole different, that's a whole different conversation. But I just want to address that because I know some ladies, whenever I say that, they get mad because they go, I don't care what nobody say, my kids, my priority. Okay. Chances are you're having struggles in your relationship and wondering why. Take care of your partner. Your kids will automatically be taken care of. So, but anyway, so this trust starts in the home. If the, the mom and dad are doing just what I'm talking about here. Um, and I've shared this example before when I had a relative live with me one time. And um, he got into a conversation with my wife where they were battling back and forth. And I came in in the middle of the conversation and I was like, wait, hold up, time out. I said, wait, 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 wait. And I told him, have you ever seen me dishonor my wife? They're like, no. Have you ever seen me disrespect my wife? They said, no. What makes you think you're about to? Just as the door opened when you came out, it can open on the way out. You're never going to dishonor my wife. See, that's when he knew. Okay. <laughs> He's taking care of his wife. See, that's what I'm saying. Your kids got to know. Don't cross my don't cross my wife. <laughs> they go, but that's my mama. Don't cross my wife. You see what I'm saying? And that's what I'm talking about. When that relationship is strong, guess what you just taught your kids? To be committed to their relationship. You taught them that. But if you don't, you're also teaching them just the opposite. So this is where it starts. It starts in the home. Whether it was um, the parent wasn't there, one of the parents wasn't there, one parent did something where the kid looked at it as they were disloyal to the partner, where you see some spousal abuse going on, whether it's mental or physical, that becomes a lack of trust. Um, that's when people start to think that's normal inside of a relationship and then they get in relationships and they're always battling. They get stressed. They can't trust people. Why? Again, because the parents, you are that example. If your relationship is not, remember we said on a scale of one to 10, where is it at now? Where do you want it to be? And what can we do in the next week or so to get it to a 10? Folks, if it ain't a 10, you better be doing everything you can to get it there. Let your kids see that relationship because you're teaching your daughters as a woman, as a mom, you're teaching your daughter what a woman looks like, what a woman should expect. As a dad, you're teaching the same thing. What's expected, what you should be doing for your spouse. You're teaching them how to be, as a dad, you're teaching them how to be a man, but you're also teaching your daughter what a man looks like. As a mom, you're teaching your daughter what a woman looks like, but you're also telling her what to expect, what ex to accept from a man. You guys see, that's that's the ultimate relationship is the parents, and that's the start. Because I'm telling you now, a kid that comes from a relationship, a, a, a fine old machine, is very rare that that child is going to have trust issues. Why? Because trust was running inside their home. That's all they saw. That's all they know. 
Now, that doesn't mean they're not going to come across a person that will portray them or won't be as loyal, but they're not taking it personal. Why? Because what they'll recognize is I picked the wrong person, but it's not because the people can't be trusted because I witnessed it. I saw it in my home for 18 to 22 years or whatever it is. I saw the trust. So I know it exists. I just got to get better picking. You guys know I've used the example of um, um, you're the hiring manager for a company. You, you get to hire all the new employees. But ever since you took over the job, they're getting nothing but bad employees. Well, they're going to do one or two things. Either they're going to fire you or they're going to retrain you because you got to get better at qualifying. Folks, guess who's the hiring manager in your relationship? You. Yep, you. So if you run across that person that's not trustworthy, then you have to look at yourself, not blaming yourself, not beating yourself up. That's not what this is all about. Because some applicants lie on the application. We know that, right? Some people lie on the application just to get the job. And once they get in, you find out they can't do none of the stuff that they told you. Then you look to get rid of them. Same thing in a relationship. They lie on the application. They ain't qualified. We start to look to see how to get them out of that position. So one of the things, again, I want to talk about, oh, the iceberg. Um, because we want to talk about this trust issue and, 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 and how it gets there. The parents, I believe, is the major one. And then also, and then because it will resolve the ones that you get into a relationship. But if you do happen in tide of relationships, the reason that the actual trust issues get broken is because of the fact is there's a thing I call the iceberg where I, where I talked about, you know, 10% showing, 90% underwater. That 90% is the intimate stuff. You share that with people and people use it against you. Trust issues. Okay. That's where, again, I'm talking about the, the be careful who you share that information with. And then if, if some person does use that stuff against you, do not make a blanket statement that this is how people are. That was a bad applicant. And go and release them and allow, have your heart still open and did, get better at the qualifying process. And that's where I talk about, uh, we talked about the list. Getting... Um, and you guys heard people talk about you create a list. It's like going to the store. Um, you qualify. Uh, I mean, you write down what you're looking for so that you don't just spend all the time in the store and people tell you to do the same thing in relationships. And you guys know, I said, I believe that the list is for a different reason. Making a list is great, but the reason for the list is so you can look at yourself in the mirror and say, chances are very, very good. I don't qualify for the person on that list. Because if you did, chances are pretty good you'd already be with them. And that's not uh, a, an attack. That's not, don't take it personal, just kind of what we're talking about. Some trust issues and some brokenness. Don't, don't be taking this stuff as no personal attack. What I'm saying is you got to get clear what you're looking for. The chances are, again, you don't qualify. That's why you're not with them. So that's not, again, an attack. It's to say, okay, what adjustments do I have to make? Like if I'm a person that, like with me, I'm into self-development. Where am I hanging out at? Or I'm hanging out at webinars, seminars where people that are working on themselves are at. And if not, why not? That's where they're going to be. If I'm in the healthy, eating healthy, then I need to be had, hanging out at healthy food stores and healthy everything and not hanging out at all the fast foods and wondering why I can't find the woman that's into her body. Because she's not going to be hanging out at all the fast food restaurants. You guys follow? So that's, again, why I say you put the list together so that you can say, what adjustments do I have to make so that I can attract that person? And so, and you guys know I'm just kind of um, glancing. If you see me glancing over, it's because I kind of wrote some things to make sure to keep me on track because this particular topic, folks, I could probably go for hours on it. I'm already at 19 minutes <laughs> and I'm sitting here going, OK, Ron, you're going to need to tie this up because we're not trying to make this no hour presentation. But we can get into that and make that happen. So that's why. I, but I don't want to do that. Um, one of the things that we talk about is and, and, and in that healing process, what some people have a tendency to do if they if they realize they have trust issues, 
they want to start to trust people. But unfortunately, in most cases, they start to trust people that don't deserve to be trusted. And then it makes it worse. What do I mean by that? I remember I had a, a relative one time that was telling me that um, they allowed their sister to use their car. And they called me and they're like, hey, um, I told her to be here at a certain time. And she's not here yet. I know she ain't going to make me late. I said, who got your car? And he told me. And I said, oh, yeah, you're going to be late. He's like, no, no, because I told her and she knows. I said, who got your car? And he told me. And I said, you're going to be late. So he calls me later and says he was late to work. Told her when she came in, um, I told you what time to be here. She like, whatever, and threw the keys at him. Folks. <laughs> and like I told him, how you going to be mad at her? You knew. Before you gave her the keys, her character and her, and her personality. You knew that. But you still trusted her to do what you consider to be the right thing. That's not what she does at this point. See, we can all change, but at this particular point, that's not what she does. This same person has told me people can't be trusted. See, you let those kind of incidences occur in your life and you start to link up. That's people. Bad link up. Because when they told me that, I said, what have I ever told you I was going to do that I didn't do? And they're like, nothing. But you said people can't be trusted. Why are you putting me in that category? Well, I'm not talking about you. You can't say people can't be trusted and not be talking about me. I'm people. And you have to address that issue because if not, you're going to take it into other relationships and start to link up that people can't be trusted. And, and one of the things I was talking about, what's going to end up happening? You're going to either be single or you're going to end up in a relationship where you're living a life of quiet desperation. In other words, you're just settled. But you're in a relationship that you don't trust them. That's why if you ask to use their telephone and they say no, you instantly think, Oh, what he, he hiding, what she hiding. They may look at it as, and I know some people go, well, you should let them see it. Why? Now, personally, I don't have a challenge with it. I give it to you, give you the code, everything else if I'm in a relationship with you. But why is he or she obligated to give you their phone? They're not. Because what you're basically telling them is I don't trust you. So I need to be able to look. See, that's one thing. If you go, let me use your phone because I got a call or whatever. You guys know the difference. You know what I'm talking about. You know if you're looking in there because you're looking for something or you're just using their phone. That's a difference. And if you do that and the person says no, they're not, they're not saying that they're doing something. They may be telling you, we don't have a relationship built on trust that you feel that you need to go in my phone and I can't be in a relationship where I'm not trusted. You guys follow because I would have an issue if, if you're sitting here throwing temper tantrums because you say, let me see your phone. But like I said, I know me personally, if I'm in a relationship with you, I ain't got nothing to hide here. You know what I mean? But don't think they're obligated and don't start writing stories on this is what it means. Because it only means what you perceive it to mean. And that's only true for you. It doesn't make it the truth. As you guys know, I said it ain't right and wrong. It's my opinion. Those are your opinions. Doesn't make it right. One of the other uh, challenges I was going to talk about is, is just that too. When you said uh, call a person and they can't talk to you right now, you start writing the same kind of story. What do you mean you can't talk to me right now? What you got going on? You got to let that stuff go. And if you're a person at this stuff, um, I had someone recently was telling me they didn't like the way that their partner was texting. The way the texts were short or whatever. And, and talking about, uh, they're like, yeah, shoot, you know, I've been single for a while. So this ain't, shoot, I could, really? Over a text? And that's what I told the person. I said, really? Over a text? Man, you better come with me with some real, some real ammo, some real, some real stuff. But see, those things come from how we feel about ourselves. Trust issues. All those kind of things that we have to address. Or we can never, ever make a relationship work. So, but anyway, but the, the bottom line is, like I said, why do we need to address it? Because you're going to end, end up single or you're going to end up settling inside of a relationship. So we got to address this. So let's talk about the solution. Um, I put down basically four different things. The number one is trust yourself. And what do I mean by that? 
you got to trust yourself, love yourself, trust yourself enough to know that you will pick the right people in your life and you will trust the right people because once you have that high self-esteem, again, like I told you before, it doesn't take a long, it doesn't take a lot of time and, and, and all this that people keep telling you for people. You can figure out people very, very quickly when you're solid in who you are and where you're headed. You can have a quick conversation and know quickly if this is a person, because if you start to feel a little uncomfortable, there's a reason why. Like I was sharing that with a guy even today. I told him, I said, if you're a person with great character and integrity, you can pick up people that don't have it very, very quickly. Why? Because the conversation is not running smooth. It just seems like they're always searching. They're always trying to make things work. But you know what I'm saying? It's like there's just something missing. And this has not been cynical and this has not been pessimistic. You just feel it because remember, I always talk about as human beings, we can pick up on each other's vibes. You start to pick up. Some's just not clicking. And you're usually going to be right. Our guts are very, very good and pick up on stuff like that. But then, so that was the first one. Trust yourself. And, and we need to do the three. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen the videos when I talked about the three statements you have to do every night, do it in the mirror. At least do it for the 21 days because everything becomes a habit after 21 days. You do the three statements. One is, um, is I'm, I'm proud of you for, and then put like seven different endings. And the second one is, is um, I forgive you for seven different instances. In other words, I forgive you for, you know, having trust issues, if that's one of them that you need to do. And if you can't think of seven different instances, do that one. I forgive you for trusting. Ron, make sure you put your name in. Ron, I forgive you for, for trusting people who didn't deserve to be trusted. I forgive you for, Ron, for forgiving people that didn't. If you had to do this seven times until you get it in you, do it. But you have the seven endings and then the third statement is, of course, is I commit to you that. And I commit to you to be open. I commit to you to allow, Ron, I commit to allowing people to, you know what I'm saying, to give them instant uh, trust until they show me otherwise. And so make sure you're doing that. But that's the first step. Trust you enough and you're going to get to that point by doing that exercise in the mirror. The second one is uh, what we just talked about, the list. Know where you're headed. When you get clear where you're headed, trust issues and all that kind of stuff kind of goes out the window because you're very confident in where you're headed. You're looking for people that are headed in that direction and you'll pick on them, pick up on them very, very quickly and you'll know who you should be putting your trust in and who not to. Okay. The third one, stay alert to how quick you judge people. You're going to judge. I know people say you got to quit judging. Folks, you're a human being. You're going to judge. The question is, is your judgment to improve or to, to, to move someone in a positive direction? Or is your judging designed to destroy and tear down? If it's designed to destroy and tear down, you get it out of your system. If it's there to help people improve their lives and move forward in their life, it's okay. And we're going to judge. So get over it. Don't beat yourself up for judging. You're a human being. You're going to do it. And then the fourth one is just rewrite the stories where necessary. When um, If you notice that you are judging people and you and you catch them, well, why did I do that? And again, this is not to beat yourself up. It's to recognize it. And they go, okay, how can I rewrite this so that I see this from a different perspective? So anyway, so hopefully we got a clear understanding on this trust issue. Um, again, Majority of it's going to start at your youth. Some of it will happen inside of relationships, but I'm telling you, forgive. And I should have touched that. If your parent, if you do have the trust issues because of something that your parents did, you got to forgive them. They did the best they could with the information that they had stored in their thought process. Because all of us, we do things for one or two reasons to avoid pain or gain pleasure. And that's really the way we run our lives. And we do it based on the information that we have. So you can't expect someone with limited information to do the spectacular, which people like to hold people to certain. Because I had, a, again, um, man, I can end up getting totally charged. I'm at 29 minutes. <laughs> I got to get this. But I had uh, someone I was talking to and they had told me that about their mom. They were like, she's not an example of what a mom looks like. And I was like, 
who who told you what a mom looks like? Who defined what a mom is? She is your mom. And she's doing the best she can based on where she's at. And you hear the stories like I listen to Tony Robbins talking about the stuff that he went through in his youth and and how that drove him to be the guy that he is today. And he thanks his mom for it. I mean, when you hear the stories, you just go, <laughs> you thanking her. But folks, that's what I'm saying. You got to understand that people do the best they can. We all do. We do the best we can. And you got to be able to trust people enough to say, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and quit holding people to these standards that we've created. It's okay to have those high standards for yourself and hold yourself accountable. Allow people to be themselves because you guys know I talk about that's what love is. Love is accepting people just as they are. I didn't say I had to agree with you. You know what I'm saying? It's it's because if I don't agree with you and depending on what it is, we won't hang out. But you got a right to do whatever you want, and I'm not gonna try to push you to do differently. Um, but again, you'll get to decide on whether I trust you and whether I let you into my intimacy, get that, that stuff that's beneath the water based on your character and integrity. But anyway, um I hope again that that this trust issue that you guys again, I hope I was clear on the parents. If they are some of the issue, let it go, set them free, forgive yourself for holding the grudge, for holding that against them. Remember, that's the stuff you need to do in the mirror when you're, you're, you're uh, having that conversation where I forgive you for. Set that free. And that might be one you have to do for a couple of days and make that all seven endings uh, until you know I forgive my parents for not being there. I forgive my parents for whatever they did that quote unquote that you feel betrayed for. And if they're not here, you can still have a conversation. And I talk about that all the time. Learn how to be able to sit down as if the person's in the room sitting next to you, in front of you. Have that conversation. Iron it out. Understand wherever they're at, if they're, if they're in the spiritual realm, they're not living like human beings, which means they're in a forgiving world, whether what they did to you or you did to them. They're at peace. That's my belief. So you can go to them understanding that whatever it is, they're in a forgiving mode and they're asking you for forgiveness if they're the ones who did the wrong. And you got to be able to say, you know what, when I was young, you did this and da, 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 and that hurt me. You've heard people say you write letters and burn them. Whatever you got to do, heal you. Let that go. Because if you don't, you're going to take it into the other relationships. And I believe if you get that first relationship together, which is the one with the parents or the guardians, I think we'll heal the other relationships. I just truly believe that because that's where it all starts. Because even if you get a partner that betrays, you'll recognize they're a human being. That's their mistakes. They messed up. But I got, a, I got evidence of what a trusting relationship looks like through my parents, my guardian. So that's a healed. You see what I'm saying? So again, if you don't have that example, go create it. You know, like they said, whatever it is that you want, become that. So become that person that trusts and create that relationship with others if you don't have that example. Because for some of us, we don't have it. You can create it again from the mental. But anyway, let me close there because I'm going to catch myself rambling. 33 minutes. Woo! Pretty long one. But uh, again, I hope the information was valuable for you. If you guys, like I said, uh, visit me at ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, that's ronsimplifiedmyers.online. It gives you everything that I'm into right now. And as you guys know, as I always say, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It's my opinion. For those of you we talk on Relationship Thursday, I look forward to talking to you next week, next Thursday. And for those for Relationship, I uh, mean for uh, Self Love Monday, I look forward to talking to you on Monday. So again, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. Give me feedback and love you guys. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.